Toho, a scary brew. A Toho fan comic by Cough Girl, drawn in 2009. Toho Project is copyright Team Shanghai Alice. On the front cover, we see Marisa Kirisame, utterly stupefied by her broomstick, now becoming sentient and rebellious. One fine day, Yobu Kompaku, a half-human, half-ghost samurai girl, was walking in the woods. Her myone, for no explained reason, was slightly blushing, so Yobu decided to grab its head, transforming it into a makeshift baseball bat. Myone, in a fit of identity crisis, squirmed about in the girl's iron-gripped fist, until eventually surrendering it being left for dead by its human counterpart. In a completely unrelated series of events, we see a certain witch flying over the canopy. Who? All that magic research for me pulling an all-nighter. Zaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
Okay, fine! I won't go! Stop already! She sobs in utter confusion and nausea while the room spirals skyward. Just please put me down! Suddenly, the tip of the broom releases a dispenser marked with a picture of a tomato. Marisa is in utter shock at the bottle. Oh? She? Marisa then receives a hot, copious load of buka ketchup. Completely defeated, she falls to her doom. A voice calls out, Marisa? Marisa? Marisa! Our heroine wakes up thinking she died like Solid Snake. Upon coming to, she lifts herself and faces her domestic partner, Alice Vargatroyd, accompanied by her doll, Shanghai. Uh, Alice? Marisa summons. What happened? The short-haired woman asks, hoping that no one set Marisa up the bomb. You've gotten blood all over your face! Were you causing trouble again? Blood? Marisa's eyes become very large and wide, even for the art style. She then realizes the incident before her unconsciousness causing Alice's confusion. Ha ha ha! She laughs. This is only ketchup, Zed! This piques Alice's anger. Four exclamation points! She spit takes. She then transforms into the disturbing aunt of the titular characters from Spy vs. Spy. Had your fun yet? She slithers as Marisa soils her bloomers. You think it's fun to go punking me like that with you ketchup? Huh? No, A Alice, you've got it all wrong. Marisa attempts to retort while making jazz hands. Alice simply clenches her fist and prepares to inflict retribution. Go back to your dirty house! She yells while firing a Kamehameha wave. Marisa is utterly blown away with a Kya! as she seems to disintegrate in the wave of raw raging tsundere energy. Meanwhile, the wacky Miko, Reimu Hakure, sits at one of the doors to her shrine, sipping on a cup of delicious Jack Daniels in a piece of old pottery. Suddenly, a scream catches her attention as she watches a certain black and white object fall to its doom on the earth. Ah, oof! Marisa screams and grunts as she falls and lands. Reimu's remark is, Headshot! As she takes another sip of her brown medicine. After her grand entrance, Marisa feels utterly dazed and confused. Oh, uh, hi, Rai... She says in a state of delirium and possibly a head concussion. Reimu, using her awesome eloquence, or Hakure yin yang or powers, is able to speak three dots. An arrow indicates how Apaka's defenseless butt is primed for violation by any passers-by that encounter it. Marisa then turns to Chirno, who she face-planted again with her gluteus. Oh, whoops, sorry there! She shouts to the unconscious and probably dead fairy. Reibu then seizes Marisa's attention once more. Ha! Huh, you must have been stealing again, weren't you? She snarks. Marisa suddenly becomes defensive. N -n no it's Alice and her dolls! She tells Reibu. She then becomes angry at the thought of being almost murdered by the woman who wants to do strange, unspeakable acts of debauchery with her and possibly her dolls as well. Why, I oughta, she says. Her ire soon fades, and she falls back onto the porch. Reimu notices the witch's mood swing and offers her some tea. Tea, Reimu offers as she offers tea. Marisa then starts to monologue. When I think of it... Whenever I think of stealing patchy books, the broom goes crazy. Marisa sports a bedazzled look on her face, while either someone's spying on her through binoculars, or Reimu is developing some strange shape of tunnel vision. <laughs> a stutterer attempts to swear. We then see Patchouli Knowledge and Itori Kawashiro hiding in the bushes, Ms. Knowledge carrying a pair of binoculars, and Itori shapeshifting into a stereotypical Jew. Looks like that black white won't be stealing my books again this time. 
Patchouli says, alluding to how her trickery almost brutally murdered a common thief. Where are you? The Kappa replies, contributing nothing to the conversation. Patchouli then offers a sizable bag of money to Nitori. Thanks a bunch, Kappa, says a heartless Patchouli. No problem! Replies the Kappa, then Yon suddenly appears without warning. You can go and train your room now, spirit! Orders either Patchouli or Nitori, but who cares? Mion then merges itself with the broomstick. Meanwhile, Marisa Kirisame is reclining on the Hakure porch side in a state of utter lethargy. <sighs> Gret, now how I'm going to get home? That damn broom flies so fast I can't even catch up! She groans while not putting forth any effort to try to concoct a plan on returning to her abode. Marisa then suddenly notices a familiar object to her right. Her response is a very out of character. Keto? She then realizes that this object is none other than her witch-tacular broom. She embraces her transportation of choice, giving it much affection. My baby! She squeezed. Guess I should go and apologize to Alice too, she tells herself. She then sweeps down to a familiar house from earlier in the comic. She makes a stable landing for once and stands foot on solid ground. Jeez. And I didn't do anything wrong to begin with, she says while scratching the back of her head. She proceeds to knock on the front door. The door creaks open just wide enough for one to peer outside. Alice peers out and sees Marisa, being Marisa. She then slams the door to continue her sick, sick, mad science involving automatons. Hey! Marisa screams upon the rejection. She then becomes really emo because her girlfriend broke up with her. But before she runs off to slit her wrists, dye her hair black, listen to Simple Plan, and cry herself to sleep, she tries to reason with her lover. Look, uh, about what happened, Ed. I'm sorry I hurt your feeling back there, she confesses. Alice, fortunately, is hearing in on the surgery remorse with a smile. I mean... How should I say this? It's a long story, you know, and I... I'm sorry, I... I really am. I if it means anything, will you come watch the sunset with me? Marisa puts on her cute face, unusual of her character. Alice then tells her, Fine, I'll let you off this time. Marisa, failing to expect forgiveness, is dumbstruck for a moment. She then proceeds to glomp Alice. Alice! Thank you! I love you! She squeezed like a preteen anime fangirl with five Gaia Online accounts while grabbing Alice. Alice, however, feels rather irritated at Marisa's silly affection. You! You baka! Alice shouts at the black white. Then Marisa and Alice mount the broom and fly at Mach 20 through Gensokyo with Marisa shouting a battle cry and Alice making a shy moe face. Let's go! Marisa bellows as she zips through the sky. Afterward, Marisa and Alice lock eyes lovingly, as if they're both planning on performing romantic endeavors reminiscent of Bonnie and Clyde. They stare directly at the setting sun, which can in no way be any good for their eyes, as Shanghai is a fifth wheel during this romantic evening. Marisa looks back at Alice and grins. Still mad at me, Zeh? She teases. Alice. Jesus Christ, it's a line! Get in the car! Alice acts so soon over the remark. Who, who said anything about being mad? She pouts while Marisa utters her verbal tick. Zeh! The couple sits casually on the floating broom, and Marisa contemplates her enjoyment of rendering herself blind through staring at gigantic perpetual nuclear explosions. You know, I really like Gensokyo, especially if see it from up here, she says. When I get tired, I'd come watch the view. It's so relaxing, like nothing else in the world. Alice blushes over how much Marisa likes looking at the sunset. Me too. She whimpers. A and if I have you here with me... Marisa then realizes that hot Yuri is imminent and blushes in imitation of her partner. A Alice! 
she says, their faces close enough to reach out their tongues and make touch. The spirit of the broom wants to get straight to the good part, so it gives Marisa a push, and much to the chagrin of Marie Patchy Chippers. She almost falls on Alice. What? Alice says before the inevitable happens. Marisa and Alice kiss under the sunset on a flying witch's broom while Shanghai looks on, masturbating to the hot, hot lesbian makeout scene. The spirit leaves the broom, making a Konata face, apparently already getting off of the two blondes kissing right on top of it. Marisa and Alice keep their faces close to each other and their hands held until they both achieve la petite mort and let go out of exhaustion. Okay, scratch that. The two actually smacked their foreheads together and underwent a mutual concussion and hemorrhaging from their frontal lobes. There goes their years of magical study and possibly spatial calculation. As some time passes, we see Reimu utilizing her ability to fly in the sky to beg for donations from birds and insects. Her stomach rumbles as yen signs float around her. Through a gap, some creepy old hag can be seen, being a creepy old hag. Meanwhile, Alice is crying over her female equivalent of blue balls from how she botched getting laid last night while Shanghai tries to figure out how human emotions work. Ow, my forehead, cause of yesterday, Alice says in a stroke of solipsism. She then notices a strange cleaning device. A broom? She wonders. And what's that on? She then reads a note on the bristles of the broom reading. I want to ride the broom with you again. Zeh. Signed, Marisa K. Alice suddenly grows a dog-like nose and imagines riding Marisa's long, hard, throbbing broomstick. Alice decides to mount the big black broom while thinking about Marisa. Well, if she insists, how can I turn her invitation down? She reasons while getting comfortable. The broom then shows signs of sentiments and performs grotesque acts that the artist dare not draw. We only hear, Alice is agonizing, screaming. Outside, Patchouli shrugs her shoulders and is a complete bitch. And that's what you get for that lovey-dovey moment yesterday, look here. The purple sociopathic heathen says, unleashing deafening bellows of raw schadenfreude derived laughter on the inside at the innocent woman's demise. That night, at Marisa's office of studying magic and experimenting with mind-altering mushrooms, she reclines in her office chair, cheery about spending all day in a constant state of mastery of mysterious magic and mental masturbation. Ha! I feel like Alice is going to pay me a visit today! She says to herself, in anticipation for some fun with dolls and perhaps a delicious sandwich. She emits days possibly tripping balls from some bad shrooms she found in the Forest of Magic earlier that day. Unbeknownst to her, Alice is watching her from behind a window, waiting to haunt her otherwise amazing hallucination. Accompanying her, as usual, is her doll, Shanghai, with what appears to be a hairy erection. I will visit you at Ainte, okay? Marisa. Alice connives as she puts on her rape face. On the front cover, we see Marisa Kirisame, utterly stupefied by her broomstick, now becoming sentient and rebellious. On the front cover, we see Marisa Kirisame, the ordinary witch, contemplating the possible truth or falsehood of the continuum hypothesis, while a rather Freudian broomstick protrudes from between her legs, sporting a smug face and pointing towards the heavens, presumably where he intends for his drill to pierce. On the front cover, we see Marisa Kirisame picking her non-existent nose while her broomstick points to a cloud that looks like genitalia. 
On the front cover, we see none other than Marisa Kirisame, the Black White, her white part stunned by a delicious portobello mushroom, while her giant black Fuda cock reaches out its appendage to push a shiny red candy-like button. On the front cover, we see some blonde staring deeply at her finger, while her magical amputee horse challenges God to a game of duel monsters. On the front cover, we see Marisa Kirisame failing to see her house from where she's flying, while riding a magical mutant diglet in a hula skirt.